there, this is one of the topics that somebody requested. There are three ways that heat energy can be transferred from one, so either can be lost or transferred, um, well, when I say lost, it's not really lost, but um, released from an object or um, taken into an object, right? And these are conduction, convection, and radiation. So conduction is, it only happens in solids. All right, and the idea is that, um, of course, there are some solids that are very good conductors and others that are very poor, right? Metals are going to be good conductors, um, and things like plastic or wood are going to be poor conductors, and they're good insulators, right? But it only ever happens in solids, and this is because it's the, the actual transfer is due to the vibrations of the particles. So the idea is that the particles are vibrating right, due to the, as you increase the heat in something, then you're increasing the, the kinetic energy as well, so the particles start vibrating more, um, and then they transfer those vibrations to the neighboring particles, all right. Uh, the next one is convection, and this is probably the one that takes the longest uh, to talk about. So this can happen in liquids, like in water, or in gases, like air, all right, and the idea is that as you so so in solids right the particles are packed very tightly they're in a rigid shape or rigid formation and so they can't go anywhere liquids and gases of course when uh, these are not as rigid they in liquids they're moving around over top of each other sliding past one another and in gases they're colliding with each other and bouncing around so the idea is for convection is that when you start to heat up the particles in a liquid or a gas, they don't just vibrate, they're free to move around. And so they do, they move around, and as you increase the heat, then you're increasing the kinetic energy. And so the particles, they gain kinetic energy, which means they move faster. And because they are free to move, or freer than they are in solids, they move faster, then they spread out. And they spread out, and that is also become less dense. Oops. And when they become less dense, right, then they rise. So they rise up. Okay, and this is true. Like, um, if you have like an underwater uh, thermal vent, then it's the same thing that causes the water at the bottom, right above the vent, to move up to the, towards the surface. Uh, that says become, by the way. Okay, so they they gain kinetic energy, they move faster, that means they, they move faster, so they spread out, they become less dense, and they rise. Hot air rises, right? Hot water rises. It's boiling as well, that's what's happening, right? And so they become less dense and rise. Now, as they get removed from the heat source, however, then they start to cool down. So eventually, they cool down which means they are going to regain their original density. So they're going to become more dense and they will fall. All right, and so this is cause, this is a continuous process as long as you have the heat source. Excuse me. Um, it's a continuous process and that continuous process is called a convection current and the only other thing you need to be aware of right so if you have a, a, a heat source here and this is putting off heat pretend that's heat right the idea is that the air is rising here and then you're going to have cool air come in from the sides to replace it so this is the cool air um sometimes that's relevant sometimes it's not but the cool air comes in from the side to replace that hot air. And then eventually, as this gets further away, the heat source, it's going to condense and um, fall. All right, so that's convection. The last way that heat transfer happens is radiation. And this doesn't require any matter. It doesn't require any particles, right? So the convection and convection are all about particle movements. Radiation is done with infrared waves, so you don't need any. Um, particles and it's simply and so the idea is that uh, it's it's done in waves any heat source is going to put off infrared waves the hotter the the, the more intense the infrared waves the more it's putting off and the things you need to know about this is that light or shiny surfaces reflect it right just like any other wave wave these waves can be reflected um, 
and dark or matte, so black or matte surfaces are going to absorb it. And so it's not just about knowing these three types. The, their favorite, one of their favorite things to do on the test is that they will ask you to apply these. So they'll give you a situation and you have to figure out, is the heat loss that's happening, is it going to happen via conduction? Is it gonna happen via convection or is it gonna be radiation? Uh, either heat loss or heat gain, right? I think you guys had a question um, on your mock or something about a dog sitting on a, cushion and you had to talk about you know how is the heat being transferred between them it's a dog sitting on a cushion so that's a solid so you would have talked about conduction there um, so these are your three ways that heat are transferred and you need to not only understand them and be able to explain them but also think about if I give you a situation um, in which heat transfer is happening which of these three is going to be relevant or which there might be multiple ways that the heat loss is happening and you have to be able to talk about all of them <laughs> 